Hi and welcome. My name is Julianne Cost, and on this episode of The Complete Picture, we're going to take a look at all of the new features in Adobe Camera Raw 8.2. So I'm going to select these images from Bridge, and we will simply use the keyboard shortcut Command R or Control R on Windows to take us to the Camera Raw dialog box. Now, one of the things that we actually did in 8.1 was we kind of changed the way that the crop tool works. And so let me just show you that. If I click and hold on the crop tool, we get the drop down menu where I can pick from any of these preset aspect ratios. But I can also go into the custom aspect ratio, right? So if I wanted something like a 1 by 3 or something, we can enter that in. But there used to be an option here to define an actual number of pixels. So not just an aspect ratio, but an actual file size. And that is no longer here. So the crop tool really is only to be used to define your aspect ratio. And then we're going to use our workflow settings to define the size. So when I click OK, certainly I could drag out that aspect ratio. I don't really think it's appropriate for this image. So let's just go back from the pull down menu and just select maybe 4 by 5. Now we can go ahead and resize that and reposition that in our image. Let's say we like that crop right there. But again, this is only when I tap the return key, it is only the aspect ratio. I haven't actually defined the output size. And we're going to do that right down here using the workflow settings. But I want to do this in a more flexible way so that not only can I crop a horizontal image, but also a vertical image. So let's grab this vertical image before we go to our workflow settings. We'll go to the crop tool. We'll go ahead and select 4 by 5 and then we will reposition this crop maybe to right there. Tap the return or enter key. So now I have one horizontal image and one vertical image and I'm going to select them both and then I'm going to come down to the workflow settings and click on that. You can see now in the image sizing area, this is where I'm going to resize the image to fit. So I have a number of different options here. Um, in fact, we have a new one called percentage, but I'm actually going to stick with the long size option and I'll change the dimensions here to inches. And if I wanted these 8 by 10, I would just type in 10 inches and then whatever resolution I wanted. So it's now the workflow options where you're going to actually set the size of the image, the actual dimensions, how many pixels per inch you want. And it's going to be the crop tool that just defines the aspect ratio that you want to crop the image to. Now, another new feature in the workflow options in 8.2 is the ability to save out custom presets. And this is fantastic because you don't really want to be coming in here every single time you want to define your settings for a different image. And I found that most of the time people only have maybe four or five different kind of ways that they crop most often. So once you're done setting this up, and it's not just image size that you're saving here, you can also save the output sharpening. You can save whether or not you're going to open this as a, a smart object in Photoshop, and you're going to save your color space and your bit depth. You can also save your soft proofing, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. So once you have your settings set the way you want them, you would just come under the preset menu and then choose new workflow preset and then name that. And you can see that I already have some listed here. So let's go ahead and do this. We'll call this Pro Photo and then 16 bit and then 10 inches 300 PPI. And then I might want to put sharpen for matte paper. So once I've saved that, it appears in the list here. But what I like even better than this is once I click OK, if I right mouse click on the workflow settings or control click on the Mac, you'll notice that I actually get all of my presets right here. So once you define your presets, you don't have to continuously go back into the workflow options. You can simply choose the preset you want right here from the list. All right, let's go down to this next image here. You can see there's some very, very vibrant colors in here. I might want to soft proof what those colors look like. So we're going to go back to the workflow settings again. 
And under the space here, you'll notice that we're not just limited to our working spaces. You can see all of the different profiles I have for the different printers. So for example, if I wanted to soft proof this or see what this is going to look like or estimate what it's going to look like when I print maybe to my 4800 with the premium lossy photo paper, I can choose that. We can choose our bit depth, we can choose our rendering intent, and we can also simulate the paper and ink. So if I want to do this often, and I don't want to change anything like image setting or output sharpening or the open option here, I can simply save this as another workflow option. So here we'll create a new workflow preset, and in this case I'll call it soft proof, and this is my Epson, this is the 4800, and I know that it's going to be the Premium Luster Photo Paper. So when I click OK, it adds it not only to the list here, but if I want to click right here on the workflow settings, I can go ahead and toggle back and forth between maybe this Velvet Fine Art setting, and then go back to the Premium Photo Luster Paper. So it's very easy now to soft proof right here within Camera Raw. All right, let's go ahead and move to this next image here. And what I want to show you is the new feather slider that's been added to the spot removal tool. So if we select the spot removal tool, which we can either choose or tap the B key in order to select it, you probably already know that we're not limited to spots anymore. Of course, I can just click and that will give me a spot and it will either clone that spot or heal that spot. In this case, I want it to heal it. I can also click and drag if I have a different shaped area that I want to clone or heal. But now I also have the option to add a feather or change the feather of that spot healing or cloning. So let me just get a little bit larger brush here. And let's set this back to clone just to make sure that I can show you what's going on. So I'm going to click here. And let's go ahead and just move this. It actually picked a fairly good spot, but I'm going to move it way over here so that we see the change, right? I'll leave it right about there. So because this is cloning, we're basically getting an exact duplicate. Now this is with the feather set to zero. But if we start scooting the feather over to the right, you can see that the feather actually moves into the image. So I wanted to make sure that this was really clear because it will actually matter when you're cloning or healing. You want to make sure that your brush size is actually larger than the area that you're trying to clone and heal if you're going to use the feather option, right? Because the feathering is going to move into that area that you're trying to clone or heal. All right, let's go ahead and delete that. And what I want to do is I just want to get a little bit smaller brush. I'm just using the left bracket here to get a little smaller brush. And I'm just going to click and drag down here in order to get rid of that little um, line there. But of course, when I did that, you'll notice that I didn't quite select from the correct place. So what I can do is I can position my cursor inside of this area that I want to heal from, and I'll just go ahead and align that. But we can see that it's a little bit um, rough there at the edge, so I'm going to scoot over this feather and give it a little bit of a softer edge on that. Excellent, and if I want to toggle on and off the interface here, we can tap the V key. That's the same as toggling on and off the show overlay option. So just the V key hides it, toggle again in order to show the interface. Fabulous, another new feature we can see when we move to this image right here. We'll go ahead and zoom up to 100% and then I'll tap the space bar in order to reposition this. I'll tap the H key then to return back to the hand tool so that I have all of my panels over here. And we want to scoot over to the detail panel. You'll notice under noise reduction, we have a new slider under the color noise reduction area. That's the color smoothness. So let's take a look at what this looks like without any noise reduction. And in fact, I might want to just zoom in one more time to make sure we can see all of that noise here because obviously this photograph was taken at a very, very high ISO. Now, when I double click the color slider here, it will set it at the default, which is 25, and it also sets the color detail at 50. Now, the color detail, if I move it over to the right, you can see it's trying to keep more of the color more accurate in the image. 
which is fine. If I move it to the left, it's going to say, well, no, I'm not as concerned with accuracy. I just want to make sure that the color is blended. So that's always a trade-off. I'm going to go ahead and double click it again in order to center it in the center. But what you probably noticed is still remaining is this kind of splotchy look where we've got these greens and magentas here. Well, that's what the color smoothness slider is going to take care of. So I'm going to move it all the way over to the right, and you can see how smooth those areas are now. Now, they tend to get a little bit desaturated when you do move this all the way over to the right. So let's just go ahead and back off a little bit until we see kind of some of that splotchiness coming back. Again, here it is without, so I'm looking in this area here for kind of this green and magenta, and I'm going to scoot it over until it smooths out those blotches of color. So another improvement that's been made to Camera Raw that I think is going to be super useful is the ability to not only move an adjustment brush's pens and therefore move the effects, the mask, but you can also duplicate that mask. So let's take a look at that. Here I have an image, and let's say I just want to maybe dodge this rock over here on the left. So I'm going to go ahead and select my adjustment brush. You can just tap the K key to do that. And then we'll go ahead and load that up with the different settings. Now you can see I've got a lot of settings that have been changed. So instead of double clicking on each one to reset it, what I'll do is I'll just select the setting that I want. In this case, it's going to be an exposure. And I want to increase the exposure. So I'll click on the plus icon. And you can see that as soon as I do that, all of the other uh, sliders will go ahead and reset themselves, which is quite convenient. So we'll just move that exposure up a little bit and also maybe move up my shadows. Let's take a look at my flow. That's going to be a little heavy handed. I want to be able to paint multiple strokes and slowly build up this dodge. So we'll go ahead and start down here. And I'm just clicking in order to dodge this area here. So we'll stick to the one on the left hand side. It's also getting a little bit saturated when I do this. So what I might want to do is I might want to come over here and add just a little bit of desaturation. And I think the effect is a little bit too strong. So I might also want to just take down the exposure just a little bit. OK, so obviously we could make whatever changes we want to this first image. And in fact, we could just duplicate this pen if we wanted to. So let's say. Let's say we were at a point and we said, I wonder what would happen if I just add maybe a little bit more of an effect. It's almost like you're doubling the effect. Well, we can do that by holding down Command and Option, clicking on the pin, and just dragging it slightly. And you can see now that we've got two pins sitting next to each other. And of course, if this was then too much of an effect, we could just come back and back off just a little bit on that second pin. All right, so that's great, but there's going to be another use for this as well. Let me go ahead and delete this pin. And what I'll do is I'll select these two images here. You can see they're quite similar. I'm going to actually synchronize these. And all I'm going to synchronize are my local adjustments right here. So what that's going to do is it's going to copy the local adjustment from this image, and it's going to paste it on this image. Now, this image looks a little different because um, I was photographing with a tilt shift lens, and so I actually tilted the lens. So that's what's causing the, um, the blur on the sides. So that has nothing to do with the adjustment. I just wanted to make sure that that didn't kind of throw us. You can see here, here is my adjustment pin. But since I was on the boat, and I obviously changed settings on my camera, We've actually moved the position of the boat, and so I need to move the position of the pen. So all I need to do is click on the pen, and you can see and watch that mask move. So I imagine this is going to be super useful when maybe you photograph a wedding or portraits, and you've gone ahead and you've made a slight adjustment, like a dodge or burn to somebody's face. And then you want to apply that to multiple images, but obviously the person's moving a little bit in each one of those images. All right, finally, the last thing I want to point out, another great new feature. I'll return back to the hand tool so that we can see all of our panels. Here I am on the basic panel. If I wanted to make a change to something like exposure or the whites or shadows or highlights, obviously we know we can use these sliders, but the histogram is now interactive, which is fantastic. So if I just want to make a quick change to exposure, I just position my cursor over that area of the histogram, click and drag left 
left or right in order to make the change that I want. And likewise, I can go over any of these other options. We've got black, shadows, exposure, highlights, and white. So really easy to change these. And you can see that as I change them, those sliders are actually being updated right down here. So it's all interactive. Excellent. As you can see, there's a ton of new features in Camera Raw. I hope you'll take some time and check them out. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.